One of the cool aspects of working with favorites is that you can create your own custom favorite, essentially creating a one or two click preset. So I'm going to show you how to create custom favorites in this lesson. I'm also going to show you how to edit a favorite, how to delete a favorite, and then how to rearrange the favorites list. To follow along, go get these three files here. Just double click here to open up the open file dialog box. Go to the demo files, scrolling down here and get noise white, and then singer WAV. And back up a notch here and go to noises and get noises music. The first thing we're going to do is make a favorite from a favorite. We're going to take an existing favorite and alter it slightly to serve our purposes. And that favorite is auto heal. Auto heal has this one little anomaly. When you apply it, it reduces the volume of the thing that you're trying to heal by about 3 or 4 dB, which is not a good thing. So you can overcome that by creating your own favorite. Now I've talked to Adobe about this, and they might down the road change the way Auto Heal behaves, but in the interim, it's a good idea to create a favorite to overcome this little anomaly. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got the noise white here opened up. It's just white noise, like so, and it's consistent throughout. You can see that the volume level pretty much holds there right around minus 7 dB. I'm going to select an area and then auto heal it. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here so you don't select too large of an area. Let's just choose this area here from there to about there. And let's do an auto heal. Now you do an auto heal by going to favorites, auto heal. We're going to effects and then auto heal selection, which is controller command U. So we'll do that. It just dropped in volume. I'll do controller command Z. You'll see the difference. We'll go back to the original state. And it pops up there. See how it increased in volume? Now I'll do Controller Command Shift C to redo it and watch the volume drop. Actually, it goes down about three or four dB, depending. So that's a little anomaly we're going to overcome by creating a custom favorite. So let's take a practical approach here. Let's go to Noises Music here. Let's zoom out all the way. Change our view to the Spectral Frequency view. Go over to this section right here. This is where these clicks are. Got a few clicks there. I'm going to zoom in a bit here by right clicking. And dragging out the time ruler there. Now we're going to see those clicks. There's one right there, another one right about here, and here, and here. So I want to get rid of those clicks using Auto Heal. So let's just zoom in on this first one here a bit. I'm going to select this with the marquee selection tool, right about there. And now I'm going to apply Auto Heal by doing Control or Command U. Deselect this and take a look here. You can see there's a little difference there. It's a little bit darker, it's not quite as intense. The color has dropped there a little bit indicating that the volume level has dropped there. Now when I play this, you might not notice it because it goes by so quickly. Let's just try that. But nevertheless, the volume has dipped there and sometimes it's more noticeable. So rather than worry about that every time you do an auto heal, I want to create a custom favorite to avoid that. So I'm going to do Control or Command Z to undo this. And now I want to create a favorite. Let me show you how to do that by just kind of centering this up a little bit like that. There we go. To create a favorite, there are a couple of approaches. You go to Favorites and go down to Start Recording Favorite, or go to the Favorites panel and click on this little red button here. Both things do the same thing. They open up this little information window, which you can turn off down the road, which basically says what a favorite is. So I'm going to click OK. Now it says basically it's ready to start recording. Well, the thing is when you record a favorite, you record effects. So you can't record a selection. So I'll just click away here for a moment, make the selection again. And it's not going to record the fact that I made a selection because a selection is custom. You can't decide how a selection is going to be in advance. So I've made the selection, and now I'm going to do an auto heal. So I'll click Control or Command U to do the auto heal. And now I'm going to raise the volume. I'll raise it about 3.5 dB. So I click here, type in 3.5, press the Tab key, and this is going to jump back to zero, but in fact it has increased it by 3.5. It always reverts to zero after you make an increase in volume. I'll click away now, and you can see that the color is not dipped as much as it was before. In fact, it looks pretty consistent now. And now we're done. We've created this custom favorite. So we need to tell the favorites that we're done. Click on this little stop button here, or go to favorites, stop recording. Either way works the same. And now it says, what's the name of your favorite? I'm going to call this Jeff's Auto Heal. Click OK. And it shows up right there. And now if I want to try this again, I'll zoom out a bit. Go to the next click, which is somewhere over here, I think. Right, there's one. I'll just make the selection. I'll either double click on this or go over here to Favorites and click on Jeff's Auto Heal. Not only does the Auto Heal, but also increases the volume. If you watch really carefully, that little thing here it was saying what it was doing, but it went so fast you couldn't read it. So I got rid of that click. We'll do this one here, like so. We'll double click on this one to do that. And then it amplified it at the end. Excellent. 
Now this is something that I use so often, I wanted to have a keyboard shortcut. To do that, I go to Edit, or in Mac, Adobe Audition, going down here to Keyboard Shortcuts, open up Favorites here, and down in Favorites will be Jeff's Auto Heal right there. Click on that to make it active. So now I want to add a keyboard shortcut, so I click on Add. It puts a little box there saying what's it going to be. So all you need to do is just now do the keyboard shortcut. If I do Control U, let's say, it'll say, wait, Control U already exists, which is just Auto Heal. That's not going to work. So I will undo that. Try again. This time I'll do Control J for Jeff, right? Control or Command J. And it says, yep, that's OK. We're all right. So I click OK. And now it shows up over here. It also shows up inside the Favorites menu right there. So now I want to move this to the top of the list. So I click on this little button there, and it automatically puts it at the top, which is something that surprises me. I would think that you have to manually put it there. Because these guys, you need to manually move around. But for some reason, it takes the ones that you create and automatically puts it at the top, which is fine. If I take a look at the favorites list here now, you'll see that it's at the top here. So I'm going to leave that button turned on. If I turn it off, it then pops back down again, which I'm guessing is probably not really the way they intended this to work. But nevertheless, with that on, it's at the top here, and I'll leave it there. All right, now I want to create another custom favorite. This one involves a number of effects. I'm going to go back to Files here. I'm going to double click on Singer. I want to go back to the waveform view there. Let's listen to her for a second. Just too high. I want to give her a little bit more presence there. The first order of business is to adjust the EQ a little bit. Before I do that, I start recording a favorite. So I go to Favorites, click on this little Record button there. Get the same information as before because I didn't turn it off. Now I'm going to go to Effects. Go down to EQ, go down to Parametric Equalizer, I pick a preset here, the Vocal Enhancer. We'll try it out first. I define just to. We'll lift this up a little bit more there, just to kind of customize this just a little bit there. Too hard to find. So I click Apply. I've applied it. Let's go add a reverb. So go to Effects, Reverb. Go to Studio Reverb. And we'll take, let's say, a vocal reverb medium. And I think I want it to be a little drier, and a little less wet, meaning a little less reverb than the default setting. Let's listen to that. Just too hard. Still a little too much. Drop the wet down a little bit more here. Just have a little bit of reverb, not too much. So dry takes the original signal, wet takes the reverb version. Define, just too hard. Define, just too hard. Define. Just too hard. Okay, just a little bit of reverb, so I click Apply there. And notice it drops the volume a little bit. So now I'm going to raise the volume a bit to compensate for that change with the reverb to bring it to right about there. And now I'm done. So I'm going to go to Favorites here and click on the Stop button. It's going to give me this thing where it says, what is this? I'm going to call this Jeff's. We'll call this EQ Reverb Volume. Click OK. Now we have a new favorite. There it is up there as well. Again, if I click this little button, it's going to put it down in alphabetical order here, right there. But if I click this guy, it puts the customized one at the top there, which is fine. Let's just try this out. I'm going to take this clip here and undo all that work. Control or Command Z a few times. And I'm going to take the EQ Reverb Volume thing, just double click on it, and it does all three things. If you go down to History, lift this up a little bit here. You'll see the last three things that happened are EQ, Reverb, and Amplify. It just shows you the three things that happened. And you can always back out of them, by the way, after you've applied them. So it's not like you're stuck with that one thing. In any event, that's how you create a custom preset. Let me pull this thing back down a little bit there. I'm going to talk about two more things here. I want to edit this preset. So to do that, I go to Favorites, and then Edit Favorites. And I click on this one. Anyone I click on it shows you the various things that were added. I'm going to take this Amplify, I'm going to drop it. I'm going to press just the Cut button there to drop it. I want to copy it, I can do a copy. I can edit it as well. There are various other things that you can do. But I'm just going to cut out the Amplify there. That's been dropped from this thing, and now we're done. So there won't be an Amplify if I do this again. That's how you can edit a favorite. And then finally, if I want to delete a favorite, select this guy and just press the little garbage can there. Or just click on this and press the Delete key or the Backspace key on my keyboard. We're back over here in the favorites list. I can go down and I can delete a favorite. And here I get a drop down list of things to choose from. I can choose any of these favorites, not only mine, but the ones that were created by Adobe. So I can select that guy and click OK, and all that work, oh no, it's all gone now. To close this panel, I just simply drag it over like so. So I think you can see that creating custom favorites can be a huge time saver.